Hello boys and welcome to your next Aim High session. Apologies that it's online uh, this week but I promise you we are looking forward to welcoming you back into the school next week. So last week a lot of you it was your first time uh, coming to Borden so I, I hope you you know enjoyed looking around the school to how much you could. Uh, I think you all did a brilliant job of displaying the Borden values. Although only one person in each group was given a Borden values postcard, I think that every single person that walked through the door showed courage, was kind to each other and to the new people they met, was resilient in their subject, be it science or language or, um, or music and drama, showed your creative side, uh, you're respectful to our staff and to each other, uh, you were kind to each other, you were resilient, courageous, and you were also, you put in a lot of effort, so very well done for that. So, this week you're back with me again, so we're going to do maths, and today I thought what we'd do is a lesson that you will have when you start here next September as Year 7, so we'll look at sequences, so we're looking at algebra today, looking at the relationship between things, so I've got there a learning objective, and that's to be able to recognise, describe, and then generate sequences that use a simple rule. So, to get your minds in the sequence mood and get you ready to work through patterns and looking at rules, I have a little starter for you. So, what you can do is you can spend about two to three minutes. Can you work out the next two terms for each sequence? And the last one is a little bit of a challenge there for you. So, pause the video here because I'll ruin it in a second. Can you work out the next two terms in each of those sequences? Okay, so for the first sequence, we've got three, five, seven, nine, eleven. So I'm hoping you noticed the pattern was that we're adding two to each term to get the next two terms. So it'd be 13 and then 13 plus two would give us 15. The next one, we've got three, six, 12, 24. And so in this sequence, each time we are times in the term by two. So three times two is six, six times two is 12. 12 times 2 is 24, so then 24 times 2, it gives us 48, and then 48 times 2 gives us 96. The next one, we've got 20, 17, 14, and 11. So each time here with this sequence, we are taking away 3, we're subtracting 3 each time. So 20 subtract 3 is 17, 17 subtract 3 is 14, and so on. So your next two terms will be 8 and then 5. For our fourth sequence, we've got 5, 10, 15 and 20. And so each time we are adding 5, or it's, we could just say it's the 5 times table, so we'll have 25 and then 30. For our uh, fifth sequence, we have 10, 50, 250. And so each time we are multiplying the term by 5, so 10 times 5 is 50, 50 times 5 is 250, so 250 times 5 is 1,250, and then 1,250 times by 5 gives us 6,250. So give yourself a mark out of 5, how did you do? And to those that had a go at the challenge, so we've got 3, 5, 8, 13, and 21. So let's have a look. So 3 plus 5 is 8. And then 5 plus 8 is 13. And then 8 plus 13 is 21. So to find the next term, we'll do 13 plus 21, which is 34. And then 21 plus 34, which is 55. My question to you, and I wonder if anyone knows, if you do know, please come up to me next week and let me know. What kind of special sequence is that? It has a special name, that sequence, the 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. If you know, please let me know. If you don't know, I will tell you next week. So that's your job, to come up to me tomorrow, uh, next week and say, Miss Illinois, that special sequence in the starter, I'm not sure what the name for it is. Can you tell me? Or if you do know, come and find out if you've got it correct. So some key terms. Today's all about sequences. So my question to you is, you know, how would you define what a sequence is? And I'm interested to know, what would you say a sequence is? And it's unfortunate that we can't do this in person because then I take some suggestions. So I'll just kind of show you what we've got down for a sequence. So a sequence is a list of numbers that follow a pattern or rule. So if that last slide we saw how three, five, seven, nine, eleven, they all follow a pattern of adding two each time. And it's a list of numbers that can go uh, as long as it wants to or as short as it wants to. So that's a key term you hear a lot today, is sequence. You also hear us say terms quite a bit. And so it's important to what we mean when we say terms. And terms are just the numbers in the sequence. So the first term, the first number in the sequence. The second term, the second number in the sequence. The third term, the third number in the sequence. The 50th term is the 50th number in the sequence. So terms are actually those numbers in the sequence and the place that they hold. 
Now, we're going to look at sequences today. We're going to look at two types of sequences. And to kind of see if you can figure out what those names are, there they are there. So the first one, the blue one, is a type of sequence. And then the uh, reddy brown one is another type of sequence. So what I would say is, have a think. Number one, can you figure out the next two terms? And then using that, what is different, what is similar between the two? And can you define for me or maybe figure out the two type of sequences we'll be looking at today? Okay, so if we look at the first sequence, we've got 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. So I'm hoping you notice that each time we are adding 3 to the term to get the next term. So 13 plus 3 is 16, and then 16 plus 3 would give us 19. On our bottom uh, sequence there, we've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So looking to get from 1 to 2. Uh, we times by 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, and then 32 times 2 is 64. Which means then, for the blue sequence, we added uh, a number each time, we added 3 each time. But then for the second sequence, we times, we multiplied. And so that is how we would define between the two sequences. So does anyone know what it's called when we have uh, a sequence and to find the next term, we add or sometimes even subtract? Well, that's known as a linear sequence. So a linear sequence, if you want to make notes, you can, please feel free to, is when we either add or subtract to get the next term, the term-to-term -term rule. So the differences, the patterns that happen are by either adding integers or subtracting integers. And then the second one, which is multiplying, and it also could be dividing, that's known as a geometric sequence. And that's when you multiply or divide to get between terms. The term-to-term -term rule either looks at multiplying or dividing with a geometric sequence, but with a linear sequence, like the one above, we either add or subtract. So let's do some questions. So the term-to-term -term rule for a sequence is add seven. Work out the first five terms of this sequence. The first term is one. So term to term rule there. That, in a sense, means the pattern. When I go from the first term to the second term, the second term to the third term, and so on, what do I do to get from one term to the other? That's what term to term rule means. What's the pattern? Well, they've told us this time is add seven. They've also told us that the first term is going to be one. So we want to find the first five terms. So we want to get the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term. Well, we know the first term is one because the question told us that, and they always tell you where to start. And this time they said start with one. Well, to get the second term, we must follow the term to term rule, which is add seven, which means that the second term will be one plus seven, which is eight. The third term, we still follow that term to term rule, so eight plus seven, which is 15. And so on, 15 plus 7, 22. And then the fifth term of this sequence, with the term to term rule being add 7, would be 29. Let's have a go at number one. This time, our term to term rule is to subtract 5, and the first term is 34. So we want to work first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and fifth term. So if the first term is 34, have a go now before I ruin it. Like I said always, please pause where need be. Can you find the next four terms of this sequence? Well, 34 take away 5, we're going to subtract 5 to get 29. Then 29 subtract 5 will give us 24, sorry. Then 24 subtract 5 will give us 19. And then 19 subtract 5 will give us our fifth term, which is 14. Have a go at this one. Can you use the term to term rule this time, which is multiplied by five? Uh, and the first term for this sequence is two. And also an extension question, what kind of sequence is this? What kind of sequence would have a term to term rule, which is multiplied by five? Okay, so first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. You don't have to write that, but that's just so people can see where I'm following along, that I'm going from the first term to fifth term. The first term is two because the question told me so. I multiply by five each time, so two times five is 10, 10 times five is 50, 50 times five is 250, and then 250 times five is 1,250. So there is my sequence using the term to term rules. Okay, so. At the moment, we have covered uh, the first part of this session. And what you should see attached to this lesson at the bottom of the uh, of the page is a PDF which takes you to a worksheet. Because what we're going to do during this session is, I want you to kind of have a go at these questions, is we'll go through a bit of learning and then you'll have a go at some questions. So if you could please locate that for me, and when you've located, come back to the video. 
So I'm hoping you've located the worksheet. Uh, we're going to start with questions one and two. OK, so leave three and four for later. We'll have a go at them for now. Just focus on one and two. Now, question one and question two are looking at what we've covered so far. So we now know what sequences are. They're lists of numbers that follow a pattern or rule. And we know what terms are. So these two questions now are asking you, can you look at a sequence and then from that sequence describe the rule for each sequence? Can you describe, can you tell us what the term to term rule is for each sequence? And I'm going to put an extension in there. I would like you to write down if the sequence, this is for question one, if it's linear or if it is geometric. That's an extension from me. So what you're going to do on question one and question two is they've asked you to um, describe the rule for each sequence and then for question one you're going to find the next three terms and then for question two you're going to find the next term so if you've got the next three terms just the next term just the, just the one next term and then an extension from me myself is can you also make a note is it a geometric sequence or is it a linear sequence if you would like to go through these questions with me Please then get your worksheets in front of you and work through as I go. If you feel comfortable enough and confident enough to have a go on your own, please do so. I'm going to say give yourself five to ten minutes to work through these questions and then come back to this video and we'll go through the answers. So for those that want to go through this question with me, please stay watching. For those that would love to have a go on their own, please now pause the video, have a go and then come back to check your answers. OK, that means that the people on their own have gone. So it's just us now. So question 1A says we're going to describe the rule for each of those sequences and then find the next term. So the first one, we've got three, five, seven and nine. So we're looking at what has happened each time. What is the term to term rule? How, how do I get from three to five, five to seven and then seven to nine? Well, it's like one we had earlier, we're adding two each time. So using that, I can find that the next three terms are 11, 13, and 15. And for those doing the extension, we can say that the first sequence there, 1a, is linear because we're adding two each time. 1b, so we've got 1, 4, 7, and 10. So we're looking at how we get from 1 to 4, 4 to 7, and 7 to 10. What is the pattern? Well, let's add three. So using that, I can now find the next three terms, which are 13, 16 and 19. Now 1C, we've got 5, 10, 20 and 40. Well, each time I am times in by 2. So once I multiply by 2, um, that means I can then find the next three terms, because I can do 40 times 2, which is 80. 80 times 2 is to give me 160, and then 160 times 2 is to give me 320. And then for 1D, once again, we're looking at what's happened. Well, how do I get from 1 to 3, 3 to 9, and 9 to 27? A way to make sure, sorry, 1C is geometric as well, by the way, because we are multiplying. So for 1C, I could say, okay, well, to get from 1 to 3, I add 2. Then from 3 to 9, I add 6. So I haven't got the same pattern. And about the sequences are about the same. They follow the same pattern. Those there, the term to term rules are different. So it must be geometric. And actually, I multiply by 3 each time. So I can do 27 times 3 to give me 81, 81 times 3 to give me 243, and then 243 times 3 to give me 729. And that also is a geometric sequence. Question 2. So 2A, B and C are the same concept except this one got your brain thinking a little bit more because the pattern might not be uh, directly obvious to the eye. You have to do a bit of thinking. So for 2A, we've got 2, 3, 5 and 8. Well, this is just like the other question We're from looking at it, because it says there to get from 2 to 3, I add 1, 3 to 5, add 2, 5 to 8, add 3. What have I noticed? Well, I've, I've noticed that when I take 2 and I add 3 to it, if I get my pointer, if I get 2 plus 3, that's 5, and then 3 plus 5 is 8, and then, uh, so that means I'm adding the the previous term is a way to kind of write it, which means to find the next term, I'd have to do 5 plus 8, which would then give me 13. Uh, then for B, 6, and then I've got 8, 12, and then 18. Uh, so to get from 6 to 8, I added 2. And then to get from 8 to 12, I added 4. And then to get from 12 to 18, I added 6. So in a sense, I could say that I add two more each time. So every time I'm going up in my sequence, I'm adding two more on. So in the first lot, if I get a lovely pen there, you can see it on the board. To get from six to eight, we added two. To get from eight to 12, we added six, sorry, four. 
and then to get from 12 to 18 we add 6 which means to get to my next term I'm going to have to add on 8 because I'm adding 2 more each time that's plus 2 that's plus 2 and then that's plus 2 which means the next term would be 26 and if I just rub that out there so you can see um, the rest of the board and the last one, I've got 100, and then 99, then 97, and then 94. So once again, if we get our pen, and we can start to write the differences. From 100 to 99, we take away 1, we subtract 1. From 99 to 97, we subtract 2. From 97 to 94, we subtract 3. And so we can say that we subtract 1 more each time. So for the next one, we'd have to subtract 4, which means the next term must be 90. And so those last three there were just to kind of get your brain going. So we have covered sequences in the fact that we can find the next term and we can also describe and find the rule that is used to find the next term. So let's continue with that. Let's dive further into it. So here we are. There is a sequence. It's a linear sequence. And I have four terms there. But my second term and my third term are missing. So the question says we need to work out the two terms between this pair of numbers to form a linear sequence. Let's do what we do know. Number one, we know it's a linear sequence, which means then what? Exactly. Because it's linear, that means that we are either adding or subtracting to get from term to term. Then let's continue to look into it. Well, to get from 16 to 37, that big jump, they've added 21. So that big one jump from the first term to the fourth term is a total of adding 21. But within that big jump to go from 16 to 37, we went from the first term to the second term, to the second term to the third term, and the third term to the fourth term. So whilst we did one big jump of plus 21, we also did three little jumps. So if we did one big jump of 21, how much does each little jump represent? Which means then, what is the term to term rule? What's the pattern? Well, if one big jump was 21 and we've got three little jumps, that means that each jump is worth plus seven because 21 divided by three is seven, which means we added seven there, added seven again, and added seven, and then ended up at 37, or we did one big jump of 21. So now we can fill in the missing parts because 16 plus seven is 23, 23 plus 7 is 30, and then 30 plus 7 is in fact 37. So from understand what linear sequence means and look at the jumps that happen to go from term to term, we've been able to find the missing term. If you'd like to watch that again, just see that example go, please do feel free to rewind the video backwards. If you're feeling comfortable with that, let's have a go at another example. What I will say for this actually, if you are feeling courageous, okay, and resilient, which I hope you all are still feeling with me, please feel free to pause the video and have a go. Can you find those missing terms? If you cannot, we're going to go through it now together. So, once again, we have a linear sequence, which means that we've either added or subtracted to get from the first term, to the second term, to the third term, to the fourth term, um, right into the end, uh, fifth term. Well, we have the first term and we have the fifth term, and that was a big jump of 32. We have added 32 to the first term to get all the way to our fifth term. Well, whilst we've done that big jump of plus 32, we've actually gone from the first term to the second term, from the second term to the third term, from the third term to the fourth term, and then the fourth term to the fifth term. So that means that that one big jump of plus 32 accounts for four little jumps. So then how much does each jump represent? If one big jump is add 32, then each of those four little jumps represent how many? How would we find that? Yep, we'll do 32 divided by 4, which is 8, which means whilst one big jump is worth an addition of 32, we can make four little jumps, which also total to an addition of 32. So we're going to add 8 each time. So now we can start to fill it in. Well, 6 plus 8, 14. 14 plus 8, 22. 22 plus 8, 30, and then 30 plus 8 gives us 38, which means, thumbs up, we are 100% correct. We can even go backwards. 38 take 8, 30. 30 take away 8, 22, and we end up back at 6. So that's the way to check your answers. 
Okay, I think now it's time for you to practice some. So now I'm going to ask you to have a go at question three. Once again, if you would like to work through these with me, please feel free to do so. You are welcome to now pause the video and have a go. And at any point, if you get to a question you're stuck on, please stop, come back to the video and then go through them with us just to remind you. OK, you do not need to do this on your own. You can do this with me. But if you want to have a go on your own, absolutely fine. Please do make notes on this because what I would love to do with your permission is to take some of your brilliant work during our maths lessons and other sessions and get it stuck onto a wall because we actually, as a club, have our own board that is dedicated to aim higher. Now, although that is a board at Borden, you are part of our community and I would love to put some of your fantastic work on the board for the other Borden boys and for all our staff to have a look at. So please do present this as neatly and as perfect as you can. I can get stuck on the wall. OK, so for those that want to go at question three, please feel free to. For those that want to work with me, stay on and let's go through question three. OK, question three A, we need to find that missing term there. So we've got a sequence that goes four, something, eight and ten. This one's quite nice because we have the third term and the fourth term. So just by looking between eight and ten, I can find out that the term to term rule is plus eight. I still could do the whole go from four um, to eight and that's one big jump of four and it's actually two little jumps and they get two. But I could do a nice easier way of just looking between eight and ten and then finding the term to term rule because all we're doing in this work is we're finding out the term to term rule by filling in the blanks. That means then working backwards, I know that the missing term must be 6, because 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, and then 8 plus 2 is 10. Let's look at B. Uh, once again, I've been quite nice to here, haven't I, because they've given me 24 and 19, which means I can use those two to find out the term to term rule. Well, 24 take away 5 gives me 19, so my term to term rule is minus subtract 5, so 34 subtract 5 gives me 29. And now C. C is when we start to utilise our new skills. So we've made a big jump from the first term to the fourth term by adding 18. Whilst we've made that really big jump from 1 to 19, we've also made three little jumps to go from the first term to the second term, second term to the third term, and third term to the fourth term. So if one big jump is worth plus 18, that means that three little jumps must be worth plus 6 each time. So we're going to do 1 plus 6 to give us 7, 7 plus 6 to give us 13, and then 13 plus 6 does indeed give us 19. So the answers for 3A is 6, 3B is 29, and then 3C you should have 7 and 13 as your missing terms. If you manage to complete that on your own without my help, please make a note on there. Please make a note just so I can see who managed to do it on their own. If you didn't, that's also fine. Make a note. I would just like to know. Right, D, E, and F. Let's start with D. So we've got three, a missing term, a missing term, and 27. So the big jump was plus 24. We know this, it's plus because they are linear sequences, so it's another subtraction I add in. Whilst one big jump was made and it was worth plus 24, three little jumps were made. So if one big jump is worth plus 24, the three little jumps are worth plus 8 each. So 3 plus 8 gives us 11. 11 plus 8 gives us 19, and then 19 plus 8 is in fact 27, so we are correct. There are the missing terms for this sequence. Let's look at E. Once again, we start with 18, and the fourth term is 39. To get from 18 to 39, we've made a big jump there of 21. Whilst we made a big jump from the first term to the fourth term of 21, we actually also made three little jumps. So if one big jump is worth 21, then the three little jumps are worth plus 7 each time. So 18 plus 7 is 25, 25 plus 7 is 32, and 32 plus 7 is indeed 39. So those are missing terms for E. And now F. So we've gone from 6 all the way up to 42. So that's a big jump there of plus 36. Now whilst that big jump from the first term to the fifth term was worth an addition of the 36, we've actually made 1, 2, 3, 4 little jumps within that. So if the big one jump was 36, that means that each of those four little jumps must be worth 9 to add up to a total of 36. So 6 plus 9 is 15, 15 plus 9 would give us 24, 24 plus 9 is 33, and 33 plus 9 is indeed 42. And so there are your answers for question 3. 3D is 11 and 19. 3E is 25 and 32, and 3F is 15, 24 and 33. 
Well done, boys, for keeping with the work. You're showing great resilience, great focus, and fantastic amounts of effort. Let's go on to our next part. Here is our next question. Work out the missing term of this geometric sequence. So we have five, a missing term, and then 45. It's a geometric sequence, so we're not going to add or subtract with this one, are we? We're going to multiply or divide. And it's the same concept of what we just did. We still are going to find out how we get from the first term to the last term they give us. So how do we get from 5 to 45? But this time, it's not going to be plus 40 because this sequence is geometric. So what do we times or divide 5 by to get to 45? We times it by 9. So that means that 5 times by 9 gives us 45. Now this is the part we really need to focus because in the last one, we said that if we had a big jump of 36 and we had four little jumps, that means that each jump must be worth nine because if you add nine together four times, you get to 36. Well, geometric is slightly different because we're not adding numbers, we're times in. So in a sense, even though we've made a big jump of nine, times in by nine, we're going to make two little jumps, but they're two multiplication jumps. So what will it be? because we have to times by the same thing. There is a number that if we times it by itself, we get nine. And therefore, what kind of number is nine? And with these kinds of questions, you will start to notice that we are using these kinds of numbers. Well, nine's a squared number, and it's three. If we times by three for the first jump, and then times by three for the second jump, overall, we have times by nine. So that's how we can find out. That's the slight difference with these is you have to think about not adding together because nine, if I did three and six or five and four or eight and one or nine and zero, that's not the same as times and by nine. Those are two numbers that add together to give me nine. So just note with geometric, your times are not dividing. Well, five times three is 15 and then 15 times three is indeed 45. So these ones are slightly different. A little clue is, this number here, if I can highlight it for you, will always be a squared number. So it's really important, boys, if you can start to, is becoming aware of your squared numbers. Another example, we've got 8, the missing number, and then 392. It's a geometric sequence, so that means that we are either times in or dividing. So let's start. To get from 8 to 392, and I will allow you, if you want to, to use calculators, or if you want to use those big brains, and do some long multiplication, long division, please feel free to. If you want to use a calculator, that's still absolutely fine. Well, we actually times by 49. We times 8 by 49 to get to 392. Well, if I do one big jump of times by 49, I've done two little jumps where I've times by the same number, and those two numbers together times together to give me 49. And once again, 49 happens to be a squared number. So you have to think of the square root of 49. Well, it's 7. If I do 7 times 7, that's the same thing as times them by 49. So 8 times 7 is 56, and then 56 times 7 is indeed 392. Okay, those are our two examples. Like I said earlier, if you'd like to re-watch them, please feel free to. Now please have a go at question 4 on that worksheet. If you would like to do it with me, that is absolutely fine. You do not use this on your own, but if you'd like to push yourself and really show that resilience and that effort and show the courage, please feel free to. But we also will go through it together. If you want to do question three, give yourself about 10 minutes, I would say, and then come back to us as we are going to go through question three in a second. Okay, let's start, sorry, question four. So question four A, we've got eight, and then uh, the missing term, and then 800. And they are geometric sequences, so we are times in or dividing. Well, to get from 8 to 8 to 100, sorry, to get from 8 to 800, we times by 100. So that's one big jump of times by 100. Within that one big jump, to get from the first term to the second term, then second term to the third term, we're doing two little jumps. Once again, 100 is a squared number. Uh, and the square root of 100, or the number I times by itself to get 100, is 10. So I've times by 10 each time, which means my answer is 80. Now, some of you might have looked at that straight away and just gone, oh, no, the answer is 80. But this is just showing to you why the answer is 80, so you can understand why. B, 
B, uh, to get from 16 to 400, I've times by 25. So if I times by 25 for one big jump, my two little jumps will be times by five each time because five times five is 25. So 16 times five is 80, and then 80 times five is 400. So for 4A, your answer is 80, and 4B, the answer also is 80 once again. Okay, so C, we've started at 12, and we're gonna get to 192. So overall, we have times by 16. Now, while we've done a big jump of times by 16, we've actually made two little jumps, and so they must be times four each time, because four times four is 16. So we're gonna do 12 times four, which is 48, and then 48 times four is indeed 192. Then D, we've gone from seven, to 567 and that is a big jump a big times of by 81 within that big one jump of times 81 we've actually made two little jumps to go from the first term to the second term and the second term to the third term and they are times by nine each time because nine times nine is 81 nine squared is 81 and the square root of 81 is nine so seven times nine is 63 then 63 times nine is 567 and so we can see there that it has worked out and then E, the last one. This is still a geometric sequence, but you might notice that our number, our terms, as we go through the sequence, are actually getting smaller. So we're not times them by a certain number, we're actually dividing, and we're dividing by 25. But it's still the same concept. For the first term to second term, and then second term to third term, we've made two jumps. And those two jumps in total are a division of 25. So that means that each individual jump, so the first term and the first jump and the second jump, must be divided by five each time. And 100 divided by five is 20, and then 20 divided by five is indeed four. So C is 48, D is 63, and E is 20. And that brings you to the end of your math session today on sequences and rules. What I'm going to try to do is put some questions on there for you at the bottom of this video if you would like to have more practice. If there is anything from the video you haven't quite understood, please do bring that to me next week when you come into school. I don't mind going through it again with you. Uh, but I do look forward to welcoming you back into Borden next week. It would be nice to have you in there. And those that couldn't make it last time, I hope you can make it next week. I'm looking forward to meet you as well. We'll have some more winners of Borden Values postcards of people that are displaying the Borden Values. I think for today, once again, I will say every single person that has watched this video and taken part deserves a Borden Values postcard. If you would like me to take in your work from today and then post it onto um, our Aim Higher board, then please do bring this with you. You don't have to, but it would be nice just to showcase some of your fantastic work. I hope you enjoyed this maths lesson today. I hope you have a brilliant week. I look forward to seeing you next week in school. And then the week after that, it will be so lovely to have you in as we get ready for our open evening where you get a chance to walk around the school have a guide, a uh, guided tour from some of our students, talk to some of our teachers, and then get to see a lot more of our subjects. So have a good week, boys. I'll see you next week and take care.